Hello everyone and welcome to Eyes to See Decodes. My name is Chris and I will be your guide today. And today we're going to be breaking down and decoding the concept of man in the box. So let's begin. My methods of decoding today are going to be the primarily the Chaldean Gematria cipher, followed by the English Ordinal Gematria cipher, as well as the Strong's Concordance, the Royal Society of Chemistry and the Periodic Table of Elements, and the Tarot Cards. The Chaldean Gematria cipher is the oldest Gematria cipher known to man. It has that antiquity. In my opinion, it is the most accurate and purest cipher. It is based on the numbers 1 to 8, just like the phonetics of a musical scale, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, 8 being the final number in the octave, and these letters are grouped up by their sounds, just like the musical notes. So interestingly enough, it uh, gives us very accurate scores. It pairs very well with the uh, periodic table of elements, the tarot deck, um, it complements well uh, with the English ordinal cipher and generally gives us scores between 0 and 120. Um, to break down higher scores, we can use the English ordinal cipher and the Strong's Concordance. The English ordinal cipher is simply A equals 1, Z equals 26. Um, it is highly relevant, surprisingly, and pairs are also very well uh, with the Strong's Concordance. The Strong's Concordance is an exhaustive concordance. It's every number, every word in the Old Testament indexed by number, and every word in the in uh, New Testament also indexed by number, the Old Testament being Hebrew and the New Testament being Greek. We also use the Royal Society of Chemistry's periodic table of elements and the artwork provided uh, on the site. It gives us a lot of insight into uh, the meanings and the esoteric meanings behind numbers as well as the tarot deck because uh, it's easier to uh, see in images. So let's, uh, let's begin. We're going to start by looking at the concept of squaring the circle. This problem of squaring the circle is a famous mathematical challenge that involves constructing a square with the same area as a given circle, using only a finite number of steps with a compass and a straight edge. The problem has a historical significance in the field of geometry and was pursued by mathematicians for centuries. The mathematical significance of this problem lies in its impossibility, which was proven in 1882 by Ferdinand von Lindemann. He demonstrated that pi, the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter, is a transcendental number. That means it is infinite and does not repeat its pattern, uh, meaning it is not the root of any polynomial equation with rational coefficients. This proof implies that it is impossible to square the circle, as it would require the construction of a length of root pi, which cannot be achieved using just a compass and a straight edge. This finding has a profound implications for the understanding of the limitations of geometric constructions and has influenced the development of modern math mathematics, particularly the fields of algebra and the theory of transcendental numbers. And we can see here um, an image of what a squared circle uh, resembles. This is a square with a circle as close as possible to the area of the square they're, they're trying to match here. And when this happens, we can see that it forms a triangle inside the square touching the circle and that uh, I superimpose the image of the pyramids of Giza the pyramid the great pyramid of Giza here over in the triangle and, and it's a perfect match and we see here that the pyramids of Giza are encoding the squared circle and here's some artwork provided here um, that I created using chat GPT a very famous example of squaring the circle is found um, by Leonardo da Vinci's work called the Vitruvian Man. In this artwork here, we see a human uh, within a square and a circle, the squared circle. And Leonardo da Vinci is showing us that the human body is the uh, bridge between the square and the circle. It solves the mathematical riddle. Um, you can see that he's outstretched here, touching the edges of the square, and his feet touch the square at the bottom. And then when he stretches his hands up and outstretches his legs, he touches the edges of the circle and that both the human the human can measure a square and also can measure a circle simultaneously, thereby uh, demonstrating that us humans are the bridge between uh, the square and the circle. And the square 
uh, ultimately represents Earth. It's measurable. We can build with the square. It's a 90 degree angle. And um, it's generally a symbolic representation of the Earth or matter, whereas the circle is immeasurable due to the nature of pi and thereby is a representation of heaven because heaven is immeasurable. And we see here that on the Freemason logo, we see that representation with the compass in the square where this compass gives us the, draws a circle and the square gives us a square. And it's uh, G is sitting in the middle of the squared circle, just like the human is here uh, that is bridging the squared circle. So the Vitruvian man drawn by Leonardo da Vinci, Leonardo da Vinci around the year 1490 showcases a male figure set within up both a circle and a square, symbolizing the union of spirit or heaven, the circle, and matter, earth, the square. This iconic drawing reflects Leonardo's study of ideal human body proportions, as inspired by the architect Vitruvius, emphasizing the Renaissance quest to harmonize art, science, and philosophy. It exemplifies how the human form bridges the spiritual and physical realms, capturing the essence of Renaissance humanism. And then, so we're going to take Vitruvian Man, put it into our Gamacho calculator, and we get an interesting number here. We get the number 42. Vitruvian Man sums to 42 in Chaldean, matching Soul Invictus, Reincarnation, Fallen Angel, Warp Speed, Golden Ratio, Master Builder, Crucifixion, Other Self, Black and White, Wonderland, and Born into Sin. We see two uh, Freemason uh, references here as Master Builder and Black and White. And the number 42 is a common uh, ref is a common symbolic reference to pi 3.14, and the reason for that is is that if we take a number line from zero and stretch it all the way to infinity, I stopped it here at 20. Um, we find we the only place we find pi in the number line is uh, at the numbers 13, 14, and 15 whereby we just have to imagine a period after the three and we get the three, one, four, one, five pi. And interestingly enough, 13 plus 14 plus 15 gives us this sum total of 42. And 42 is also the sum total of 314 pi. So we can see here how 42 has this relationship uh, with pi. And it goes uh, much deeper than this, but um, we know that pi is a generative principle and used often as a representation of uh, the beginning of something. So um, interesting here that Vitruvian man uh, gives us the total of 42. So let's move on. So ChatGPT wanted to tell us that the problem was impossible with a compass and straight edge. It, it, it used uh, that wording. So I asked it the question, I said, is it, is it possible at all? Um, due to the nature of pi, and here's what the answer ChatGPT came up with. The problem of pi being a transcendental number indeed means that you cannot construct a square with the same area as a given circle using only a compass and straight edge. So we got that answer earlier. Due to the, price, due to the precise nature of pi and the limitations of those tools, however, with modern mathematical methods and tools beyond the compass and straight edge, we can approximate the very area closely or calculated exactly in numerical terms, allowing for the construction of squares that are effectively equal in area to a given circle for practical purposes. So all ChatGPT really says here to, in, that, in, that I can understand is that we can only approximate the area very closely and then in numerical terms, in a sort of in imaginary terms here, we can calculate it exactly using uh, computers, I suppose, uh, but we do that uh, we do that just for practical purposes, but truthfully, the uh, the problem is impossible. Uh, the nature of pi proves that it is impossible. So um, it'll just keep getting effectively close and close and close and close and close all the way to the point where it'll just never touch, I suppose. So, um, and here we see how important the concept of squaring the circle is. We see it within the Great Pyramid, and if we look at the pyramid from the top down, from a sky view down, and we see that the pyramid is a square, and then we put a circle matching the area of that square around it, and again, then we get the uh, the perfect triangle here, which is also the Great Pyramid as well. So the Great Pyramid of Giza is absolutely encoding uh, the concept of squaring the circle. And if we take planet Earth and the circumference of planet Earth uh, and make a square to equal to its circumference, we see here then we it automatically gives us the circumference of the moon. 
and then we also see the same squaring of a circle here at Stonehenge. Um, so we take the concept of I squared the circle because it's uh, it's the Vitruvian man who's squaring the circle. I squared the circle gives us a sum total of 54 matching the element number 54 called xenon on the periodic table of elements. And the name xenon is der derived from the Greek word xenos, meaning stranger, which is interesting because in the movie They Live, for those who haven't seen it, is um, there's a frequency or a television channel that they call is the frequency that keeps the masses asleep and hypnotizes them sort of into a zombie-like state. And that 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 is on channel or cable 54. And interesting, we get the stranger, the stranger, the, the strange voice in our head. Uh, they live. And we also see another reference to the number 54, uh, pretty famously at Club 54. I believe it was a club in New York City, but I could be wrong. There was a movie about it. And we see here the downward pointing triangle, always a party at Club 54 nightclub. And uh, the artwork here provided by the Royal Society of Chemistry is itself a squared circle. It's a circle within the square. And we see the lightning flash in the middle, the lightning. And it's also got the green coloring here that we see uh, reminiscent of the matrix. Um, and it says here, according to the website, the electro flash uh, icon reflects the use of the gas in camera flash technology. And not only is it used in camera flash technology, we'll see here that xenon light bulbs are used for movies. This is usually a tube filled with xenon gas with the electrodes at each end and a metal trigger plate at the middle of the tube. And we see here that xenon light bulbs are chosen for movie theaters because they produce bright daylight-like light, critical for vivid true-to-life colors and sharp images on big screens. These bulbs are efficient, converting electricity into light effectively and have a long lifespan, reducing the need for frequent replacements. So we see here, I squared the circle. We know that already as summing to 54. And this, these are the matches I found within Chaldean. So the squared circle is bridging heaven and earth and the words heaven and earth sum to 54. A spirit and flesh also sum to 54. Consciousness, a lotus flower, trapped in hell, Elohim avatar body, mantis human avatar, human host body, doppelganger, inverted world, the virtual reality, the dream machine, the machine elf, the jealous god, dungeon master, dreams transmitter, hypnotic trance, blood control, lost in the maze, and the matrix has you all summed to 54. So the words squared circle, when we put that into the, Cal the Chaldean Gematria calculator, we get a sum total of 39. And 39 is a very big number in numerology because it matches the word Lucifer in the help in Hebrew gematria. And this is the Hebrew smelling Hebrew spelling of Lucifer from Isaiah into the Hebrew ordinal gematria calculator. And we see that it has a sum total score of 39 matching the Greek name of Satan, Apollyon. And this is the Greek gematria calculator. And this is the Greek smelling of Apollyon in the Bible. And that also gives us a sum total of 39. Um, 39 in Chaldean matches stuck in a box, the black box, the black sun, Saturn's cycle, the man trap, father time, Kronos, Saturn, time loop, the force, order and chaos, computer, projector, inception, wormhole, earth plane, godfather, the wretch, for those who have seen my um, Groundhog Day decode, that, that was in there, sea monster, which is another name for Leviathan, uh, that we learned that on in my Church of Satan decode, the parasite, God's voice, the sound, the airwaves, artificial mind, mind parasite, pride and hubris, again back to Groundhog Day, Eat the pain, I got you babe, another reference to Groundhog Day. We are in Oz, who is a YHWH, who is yod heh vad -Hey. pineal gland, and those all summed to 39, as well as the word from Xenon, the stranger, also sums to 39. Here we see a man walking inside a squared circle like our reality. And uh, um, we learned that the pineal gland, there's a reference to the word 
Peniel in the Bible at Genesis 3230. And we see here that it breaks down to the strong in the Strong's Concordance as Hebrew word 6439. And that is uh, face of God. And that breaks down from two words. Uh, it's Pana and El. And that reference, El, is El, the Almighty God. So the, this face of God reference is in reference to El, the Almighty God. And we know Jesus is Emmanuel. With us is El. So let's move on. So the squared circle, um, squared circle matches 39, matching the 39th element in the periodic table of elements. And that element is yttrium. This element has an atomic weight of 88.906. This is a very interesting element. We see here it, it's the 39th element and it has an atomic weight of 88. And the artwork provided by the Royal Society of Chemistry shows us these orange concentric circles reminiscent of Looney Tunes. And Tunes is a reference to sound, same as uh, we saw the same kind of references with the stranger and element 54. And uh, we see here a satellite dish standing on a square foundation. So this is a squared circle sitting inside these orange concentric circles. So another squared circle reference with the element yttrium. And the number 88 is, re is highly relevant. We see that from Back to the Future, and it's, uh, it's a pretty famous number. And the 88th element itself is tied to Ra, or radium, uh, the Egyptian god Ra here. And it, the artwork for uh, radium is the green background again, reference to the green matrix. And we see here, this is a paintbrush. It also looks like a flame or a light. So light is within time, and this is a clock. So the 80th element is radium. The element features the letter symbol Ra, like the Egyptian sun god Ra. The artwork for the element features a candlelight within a circle representing a clock over a green background. And we know the green background is symbolic of the green matrix, the green goblin, uh, the Wizard of Oz, we see a green reference to the Emerald City. The Good Place has the green screen uh, every time it shows us the title for The Good Place. A leprechaun, the green leprechaun that guards the pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. The Hulk, the green Hulk. And Green Death, uh, the entity Death is green. And uh, oftentimes, when, if, we pass, when, if people pass away, sometimes they'll turn green. Uh, interesting fact there. And then here we see uh, another Back to the Future reference. So at 88 miles an hour, this is the flux capacitor. And we see the Y here uh, symbolic on the flux capacitor, matching the periodic table, table of elements with 88 and the Y symbol. So this is something I came across uh, during my research. Um, that I didn't know. I didn't know that uh, Mr. Dave Thomas here was a Freemason. And uh, I thought that was interesting when I learned that. Um, so Dave Thomas the f was the founder of Wendy's, which was a fast food restaurant chain. He was a Freemason and allegedly he was a 33rd degree Freemason. He was also a member of the Shriners. And that makes sense because you, you have to be either a 32nd or 33rd degree Freemason to get into the Shriners from my understanding. So um, so being a Freemason isn't interesting that he makes burgers that are square over round buns, squared circles, just like his Freemason logo. And uh, Wendy's, when we put that into our Gamatria calculator, gives us a sum total of 90, which is the square. Uh, a square is 90 degrees, which is the bottom here of uh, the Freemason logo, the 90 degrees. And 90 plus 47, this, this compass is set at 47 degrees. 90 and 47 give us 137, and 137 is the 33rd prime number, and there's 33 degrees within Freemasonry. Um, we've heard that there's higher degrees than that, but what's famously been reported is that there's 33 degrees, and that's the highest. So um, I, f I came across this uh, 2005 Wendy's commercial, and um, I want to take a look at it. The link is here. I'll provide it down in the description as well. But uh, let's take a look. There are some interesting uh, references within there that I want to show you. So let's take a look. It takes flair to be a square, to walk around with no hair. I'm bold. Yes, I swear to be the only single square. Because it's better than being round or being a king or a clown. It takes flair to be square, to be hardcore enough to dare to be made the way you like to be juicy. To be fresh. To be beefy. Is the best. Do a square burger at Wendy's and do it taste right. So looking at that, 
I wanted to show you, I got two screen captures, and the one screen capture was when uh, the square burger says it's better than being a round or a king or a clown, and uh, likely uh, based on what we're seeing here that it's a reference to the king of kings here. Um, he gives us a wink uh, as he says that, <clears throat> and we learn here in Psalm 35:19, and it says, Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me, neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. So we're learning here how to identify um, hatred of Christ uh, here in Psalm 35:19, And here we see a uh, exact representation of that in this little animation. Uh, and just as he's saying, it's better than being round or a king, he winks. Um, and then it transitions to show us here where the square burger is being raised on this pedestal. And as he says the words beefy, we see uh, two five-pointed stars appear to his right and left. That's a five and a five. And they're spinning. Um, and I captured them here in the upside down position to show the representation of the upside down pentagrams. And we see here five and five represent our five fingers, or these five pointed stars represent us as an angel, our human body, our human host body. So here we see the five and the five, and we see five plus five gives us 10. And in Chaldean, man is the total of 10. Five and five is also 55, and 55 in English ordinal is the word Satan. And here we see him do the uh, bypass pose, the pose here. And that is uh, reminiscent to the Egyptian goddess Nut, uh, or Ma'at, also known as Isis, um, the female goddess. And here we see her holding up the uh, firmament, the stars in the firmament. And there's a, a man, a green man who's dead at her feet, the green death, because he's dead, um, and she's standing up over him. And uh, this symbol uh, represents that. It's an homage to Nut. And as he says beefy, um, again, uh, a reference, that's another reference to us and man. And you'll see here in Genesis 32, 2, and we can look at that as 3, 2, 2, which is the number of skull and bones, interestingly. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. And uh, this word God here is Hebrew word 430. Um, I didn't include it here in the decode, but uh, you're welcome to look it up. It's Hebrew word 430. That's Elohim, gods of the supreme God. So this is not El the Almighty or the eternal Jehovah. This is Elohim, the gods. Um, and so, and when Jacob saw them, he said, this is Elohim's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. And the word host breaks down to the Hebrew word 4264, which means an army, because this is a, a war from the beginning. And uh, this means an encampment of travelers or troops, hence an army, uh, whether literal of soldiers or figurative, meaning dancers, angels, cattle, locusts, and stars. Those are all synonyms in here. So dancers, angels, cattle, and locusts are all the same thing according to this de definition. Um, so that's an army band battle, but they're Elohim's army, Elohim's dancers, Elohim's angels, Elohim's cattle, right? So man is a reference to cattle here. And uh, Jacob saw that and called it the name of double camp. And because we are twins, we are uh, in spirit, we're angel demon opposing. So uh, that's what this reference here is. And Jacob saw them and he said, this is Elohim's army. It's his cattle, his host. Uh, his band of locusts, and he called the name of that place Mahanaim, a double camp. So we're going to move on. Let's take a look. So let's move on to the concept of the black cube of Saturn. And um, we see here uh, references from around the world, these giant statues of a giant black cube. And once you realize, uh, uh, once you're open open your eyes to this cube reference, you'll see it over the Nintendo GameCube, for instance. Uh, you'll see it, um, Desjardins Insurance has a cube reference, a hexagon reference. You'll see the hexagon reference in tons of advertising um, and cube references in advertising, uh, just like we saw in Wendy's. So the black cube of Saturn, we see one here in Australia, Denmark, Manhattan, and uh, Santa Ana. Um, and the reference to Saturn being a cube, as we see here on the North Pole of Saturn, for those that don't know, there's a hexagon-shaped 
storm on the north pole of Saturn. And uh, the hexagon transitions into a cube, as you see here. Um, geometrically, it represents a two-dimensional cube as a hexagon. In three dimensions, it'll be a cube. Um, and on the south pole of Saturn is uh, a, a circle-shaped storm, or concentric circles, and it looks like an eye within, within the storm there. So on the north pole is the cube, on the south pole is the eye, and we see this reference uh, in pop culture in Lord of the Rings, with uh, Lord of the Rings is a reference to Saturn, Sauron is also a reference to Saturn, and the all-seeing eye of Sauron is seen here on the south pole. Um, we see the black cube here in Australia, uh, in Manhattan, New York City. We see the black cube at, in Saudi Arabia and Mecca. We see the black cube in Denmark. Here it is at the Apple Store in New York City, the cube reference. And then here's another black cube reference uh, in New York City. This is United Nations Meditation Room. Um, this is their spiritual room, uh, probably uh, governed by the Lucius Trust. Uh, formerly the Lucifer Trust, and this is the Black Cube of Meditation Room. And then here's another Black Cube reference. I'm not sure of this location. Again, Mecca. And then here's the uh, six-pointed Star of David, uh, also known as the Star of Rempen in the Bible, the Star of Saturn. And this uh, this here, you can see the hexagon in the middle. The hexagon transitions into a cube, being the uh, Black Cube. So um, we're going to decode this. Let's decode the Black Cube of Saturn. So Saturn is a 93 in uh, English ordinal, uh, matching the word man in a box. And Saturn and the moon intriguingly share the number 29.5 in their cycles, with Saturn taking about 29.5 years to orbit the sun, and the moon completing its orbit around Earth in approximately 29.5 days. This numerical similarity offers a symbolic link between Saturn's long-term maturation processes and the moon's shorter emotional rhythms, suggesting a deeper connection between personal growth and emotional cycles in the fabric of the cosmos. And the number 93 is, uh, is uh, attributed to the occult, uh, mostly through uh, the Ordo Templi Orientis, which is a secret society that was uh, famously attached to Aleister Crowley, as well as the theosoph theosophical system, uh, religion or cult, uh, called Thelema. And here we see in Thelema, the number 93 is one, is one of a series of symbolic numbers that is associated with Aleister Crowley's theosophis theosophical system, Thelema, it is commonly seen in the salutations and closes of letters written by members of the OTO, the Ordo Templi Orientis, or by other Crowleyan followers. So here we see this is the Crowleyan hexagram, and what's special about it, it's just the uh, one triangle up and the one triangle down, just like the Star of David. And uh, But this one here, uh, you don't have to lift your pencil to make. So you can make this entirely without lifting your pencil. And uh, we see here in Chaldean, the number 93 is attached to the goddess of freedom, and whereby Saturn in the Chaldean is the number 21, matching the tarot card. We get a visual image here, the tarot card 21, and that is the world card. And here we see the female goddess of freedom in the middle of the card. Uh, she's naked, entwined by a, a sim, uh, looks like a, uh, a cloth here, but it's in a coiled DN like a DNA spiral, and she's holding two pillars, just like Yakin and Boaz, or good and evil, male and female, the duality, and she's enclosed within the snake eating its tail, the Ouroboros, with the twin X system on either side, all underneath the cosmic canopy, which is Aquarius, Leo, Taurus, and Aquila, and it. Uh, the eagle and Scorpio are one and the same. So this will be Scorpio as well in the top right corner. So according to ChatGPT, the black cube of Saturn is a concept found in various speculative theories and esoteric beliefs. It refers to the symbolism of a black cube related to the planet Saturn and is often associated with themes of control, time, and material reality. According to these theories, the black cube represents the limitations and constraints of the physical world, as well as structures of power and authority that govern it. Saturn and astrology and ancient mythologies has connections to the passage of time and order, and is often symbolized by the figure of Father Time or Kronos or Saturn. 
Um, the cube being a solid and stable geometric shape is used to symbolize the material world and its boundaries. The concept has been interpreted and utilized in various ways, including in discussions of conspiracy theories, where it is sometimes suggested that the black cube is a symbol used by secret societies or as a representation of some form of global control mechanism. Hmm. Well, we've been warned. So um, the black cube of Saturn gives us a score in Chaldean of 63 and a score of 174 in English. Uh, 174 is a perfect match to the periodic table of element, uh, the element lutetium, with an atomic average weight of 174. And we know the numbers 7, 4, and 1. We've learned this in previous decodes. The number 7, 4, and 1, according to Manley B. Hall, a very high ranking famous Freemason who's written several books, told us that the number 7, 4, 1 and its anagrams, 174, 417, are numbers of Lucifer. And here we see it here on the element lutetium, with uh, it's the Lucifer element, Lu. And uh, it's the 71st element of the periodic table. And here we see the upside down rainbow with a down arrow, uh, either clouds or water, uh, governed over top by a banner of uh, fleur de lis, the, uh, and over a what can be seen as perhaps a sea of red or a sea of blood. And uh, the black cube of Saturn, having a score of 63 in Chaldean, matches the following words in the Chaldean Gematria cipher. It matches mischievous spirit, supercomputer, particle accelerator, the seed of life, flower of life, rise from the ashes, the man who laughs, the number of man, the five-pointed star, all the world's a stage, do what thy will, thou wilt, which is a Alice Crowley saying, Shiva the destroyer, synagogue of Satan, the land of slavery, the monetary system, out of control, law enforcement, Ten Commandments, the Anointed One, and Jesus of Nazareth. So the other uh, video I wanted to break down was a song by Alice in Chains called Man in the Box. And uh, this is a f old song from 1991 from a band I used to really enjoy. And uh, the, the word Alice uh, rooted in the Bible means of nobility, of royalty. And uh, it's a uh, an analogy to us being the angels. So this is Alice in Chains, or the angel in chains, is really what that what that reference is. As well as you can, another reference would be Alice in Wonderland, which is the story of the fallen angels. So uh, Man in the Box. Here's the YouTube link. I'll put a link also down below in the description. And uh, this song is called Man in the Box. And the first uh, lyric is I'm the man in the box. And uh, I'm the man in the box gives us a number of 63 that we just saw from the black cube of Saturn. And it also matches the electro flash from the element Xenon is an also number 63. And interestingly, Lord Jesus Christ in Greek gives us a number 63 as well. And in Chaldean, the number 36, which is the inverse of 63 is Jesus Christ. So uh, interesting number. So we're going to take a look at the music video. Uh, the video shows the band performing in what is supposed, supposedly a barn, uh, where throughout the video, a mysterious man wearing a black hooded cloak is shown roaming around the barn. Then after the unknown hooded figure is shown, he is shown again looking around inside a stable where many animals live, where he suddenly discovers and shines his flashlight on a man who is going to be Lane Staley, who is the lead singer of Alice in Chains. Uh, that he finds sitting in the corner of the barn house. At the end of the video, the hooded man finally pulls his hood down off of his head, only to reveal that his eyelids were sewn together with stitches the whole time. Feed my eyes, now you've sewn them shut, um, is the line of the song uh, that is depicted when uh, he takes his hood off. Uh, Lane Staley, uh, who tattooed his back the Jesus character depicted in the video with his eyes sewn shut. So uh, this unknown hooded character um, is a representation of Jesus in the video. So pay attention to that. And we're going to see here that man in the box, the title of the song, man in the box, gives us a sum total score of 44 in Chaldean, matching the atomic weight of scandium, which happens to be the 21st element. And 21 matches the 21st card of the tarot deck, the world card that we just looked at, and the artwork for scandium on the periodic table of elements is a perfect match for the tarot card, the world card. Uh, we see here the female figurine with the twisting DNA overhead holding the two pillars with a 
serpent snake encircling in the background around her and some of the etchings as well look like animals uh, likely they are representations of the astrology so um, looks like the Royal Society of Chemistry also uses the tarot deck interestingly so let's move on so looking at the video I captured some screen images and uh, right off the bat they show us uh, all of these farm animals um, within these uh, boxes or stables and the first one they show us is cattle we've already broken that down knowing that cattle is a, a reference to humans and they show us a goat another reference to humans as sheep turn into goats and then another reference is pigs and people have been referenced as pigs often and then we see our main uh, the main the human here which is Lane Staley he's in the corner of the cube and he's crossed out here he's cro there's a cross over him and uh, we know that the black cube of Saturn gives us a sum total of 174 matching lutetium but human husbandry also matches 174 and this is human with an E because uh, we are light beings, humans, uh, human husbandry. Um, this is another image uh, later in the video with the guitarist. And when he, we, there's a lot of these images with this uh, fence. They're fenced in this grid pattern. Uh, this reminds me of the sort of the grid pattern in the Matrix. And uh, we see here on the, in the on the barn on the barn doors. There's the double X, the two X uh, symbolism here. Uh, and man in the box is a sum total of 44 matching the double x system which is a sum total of four four and we know that we are the two x is the a symbol of the female goddess or the matrix and uh, here we see the hooded figure a representation that we now know to be jesus uh, walking through with his with the goats uh here in the ref as in the reference and again we see another x on the uh on the barn door so um, man in the box is a 44 matching two corinthians 44 4 4 in whom the god of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine unto them and this is an interesting passage and that uh, we see here this image of lane staley with the flashlight totally uh, blinding him by the light in essence uh, and uh, whiting him out and in this passage it says in whom the God of this world hath blinded uh, God this word God is the word Theos but you can see here that it is the lowercase g and uh, the definition of Theos means a deity and it also means the supreme divinity uh, so this is uh, we see in the bottom in the bottom sentence here the capital G so this will be a deity Elohim and this will be Theos Jesus Emmanuel uh, El the Almighty or eternal Jehovah here uh, so in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of Theos or El the Almighty or the eternal Jehovah should shine unto them and uh, here we see the guitarist uh, or the bassist I should say and uh, there's a lot of ladder references in the video if you take a look and I assume that that is a reference to Jacob's ladder or the ascension up out of the matrix or out of the box and again um, this was probably the most interesting find I found within the video this is during the guitar solo of the song and on the uh, guitarist's uh, guitar uh, the sort of wallpaper uh, or theme that he has on it is a bunch of squared circles and uh, I was able to capture the image and stabilize it and I found I saw that within the squared circle is a five-pointed star and I thought that was uh, very interesting because that we've shown that before uh, we've seen that in my mother of exiles decode where we broke down the Statue of Liberty who sits on an 11 pointed star called a Kalapoth and uh, the Kalapoth represents the human host body our flesh our flesh body and it is a peel husk or shell and the, and it's inherently evil the flesh is inherently evil it's opposite to spirit and it houses the essence of holiness which is the spirit the five-pointed star the angel us sitting right in the middle of the Kalapoth and we are inside a hexagram if you can see we're inside the hexagon which is a cube so there's your circle cube your squared circle governed by the 2x on either side within 
the system of duality, your one up, your one down, your masculine, your feminine, your good and evil, all within the 11 pointed star, which is the human host body, the flesh, the peel, shell or husk that starts off in duality and and in this world wants us to end in singularly, singularly uh, downward towards hell. So two into one down is what you're seeing here. And it's uh, right on his guitar, the squared circle with the five pointed star in the middle, the kelpot. Let's move on. So John 9:39 tells us, and Jesus said, for judgment, I am come into this world that they which see not might see and that they which see might be made blind. And uh, here we see the end of the video where the Jesus hooded character takes off his hood and we see his eyes are sewn shut. And uh, that could be a representation that uh, he's he's looking for his lost sheep in the, uh, in the barn with a flashlight um, and he can't find them because uh, they've been trapped and they've been made blind themselves and they can't find Jesus. And then here's uh, Lane Staley. I got an image uh, that I looked for knowing that he had this back tattoo and I found it on the cover of Hit Parader. And here he is showing off his back tattoo, which is a match to his video here with that is the Jesus character with the eyes sewn shut. And interestingly, right behind his head is the X. So I hope you enjoyed this decode. I want to thank you all for sticking around right to the end. And uh, I appreciate you all. Thank you to all my supporters and subscribers. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. And uh, you can follow me on uh, Telegram. I have Facebook on Truth Mafia. Special thanks to Tommy Truthful for all your support. Thank you to Jonathan Kleck for his uh, initial breakdown on the Kelepod. Please check out his channel and his work. It's fantastic. And uh, I'll see you guys later. And much love to all. Thank you.